if you pull this red lever out. So let's get it on the bench and see what's inside. Let's move on, cause it's time to move on. Let's have a look. Some little resistors there. The potentiometer with third pin in, you'll see that the needle then fluctuates. If I give it a rev, you get real-time live information. Powertrain, intake, air temperature, circuit, high input. Now if I click on that. Baby, I'm a gangster too. All right, let's see what is inside. Okay, I've just snipped a couple of cable ties, holding that on, and let's just unplug this little bad boy. Simply pull this red lever out, and then pull the plug off, like that. There we go. So let's get on the bench and see what's inside. Obviously, when you do connect these, make sure you've got the keys in your pocket, because otherwise it will throw a fault on the dashboard. Really curious to see what's inside here. I mean, um, there's no sort of uh, tamper-proof screws, so it would suggest that they're not hiding anything. Let's have a look. Okay, <laughs> this is, when I see this, and it's all hidden here, it very often tells me that maybe they are trying to hide something because they don't want to tell you what they're doing with the circuit. So let's see what else is there. Well, <laughs> I think I can see what this is. I mean, looking at the tracks here, it's not the most complicated PCB if I ever saw one. Yeah, so what we got here these tracks here, these pins, is suggesting that they're going to components which are on the back underneath here. Now I don't know if this will peel off, it's not going to do it any harm if it does. So looking to this a little further, I can actually see that there are some little resistors there. So thankfully it's not just a plain blank PCB which is good there's actually components on the board there. I don't want to take this off too much because I don't want to, I don't want to damage it. I'm going to put that back there. Um, the reason they do this, as I said, is just to give it some sort of um, secrecy, really. It's not certainly needed for heat, that's for sure. And looking on this side, well, these would be different uh, resistors that are connected to probably and the potentiometer which is the screw here that I'm turning from the outside is connected by the looks of it to components here goes back to this one two three third pin in and then the other side via different other components is going to the fifth pin along so the good news is that this is not just a hoax there is actually some electronics going on exactly how what it's doing my gut feeling is that they have managed to basically keep the car on the cold startup. So when the car is first started, most cars have this. It puts a little bit more fuel to get the car warm, to get the catalytic converters going so that it gets to that economical rate. It runs a little bit probably richer in that sense. And I know when I plug in my OBD2, I've just got a little cheapy one that I keep in the car and I'll show you that it does bring up a fault on the little code reader but actually it doesn't bring up a fault on the dashboard which is good. The instructions do say that if you find that the car is running a little bit lumpy that if you take a plug out and they've got a lot of carbon built up then turn the screw back a few turns uh, until you get a happy balance. I'm fine the way that it is, I know that it makes a difference because if I plug that in now with the standard ECU it's not a placebo effect. I do feel that it's not as sharp on the throttle. Um, it doesn't quite have that low down sort of extra little oomph that this thing gives. And it does, my approximation is it gives a sort of between a 10 to 15% increase. And also at the top end as well, 
I find it just gives it a little bit more liveliness too. You can always disconnect it from the car if you don't want it. You can always go back to stock. This is the key thing. It's not being remapped with a computer. It's just an added device that you can put into the wiring loom. And if you feel that you're not happy with it, you can take it back to how the car was. So let me just show you what that fault code is now when I bring it up on my phone. So I've had this little OBD2 fault code reader for years. I keep it in my glove box. And it's this thing here. You can get much smaller ones. I actually keep one almost on my key ring. They're so small now. You can get them literally just the end there um, and you can stick them in your bag. I usually find I've got people that maybe want to try and get a bit of troubleshooting on their car and I just plug it in because it's so convenient. But this one I must have had for about 15 years. It works on different software on your phone. I use one called Talk. Again, there's a link below if you want to see it. And you just plug it in and it'll bring up the codes. It's not as in depth as a regular diagnostic reader that you would get like the ones I do like iCarsoft. But importantly, it gets you out of trouble and it can clear codes as well. So just plug it in and you'll see on my screen the fault code that comes up. So just down the back here, that little white rectangle there, that is your OBD connector. Have a look and see because there's only one way that this can fit. This is the orientation and let's push it in. And on the back, you can see that the lights start to come on and they change once you've connected your phone successfully. You don't need to see the lights to tell you anything, it's just an indication. So, with your OBD2 diagnostic reader plugged in, what you wanna do is just go down to your Bluetooth devices and you connect onto the device, which for me is CBT. It won't actually show anything, but I know it's connected once I've clicked on it. And then find once I've done that, go into the software, which is the app here called Talk. So what I like to do now is put the key in the ignition. You don't need to start the car, but on the top, so the left hand side of the top is the satellite. The next one along is the app. And the third one, which is the CBT, that's the OBD2 plugin that's sitting in the car. And that if it's stationary, it's connected successfully to your phone. And then the one that looks like a car, you can set up different profiles. I have a few cars, so if I only had the one car, I could set it up so there's always be, say, for example, the Honda Civic. Now, if I start the car, if you look at the revs at the bottom, you'll see that the needle then fluctuates. If I give it a rev, you get real-time live information, which is great. You've got uh, this app here, which is just one of the screens that comes with it. It tells you the vacuum, for example. Um, it's giving you the speed if you're driving along. Obviously, I'm sitting stationary, and you've got your revs. You've also got accelerator at the top there on the left. So some good sort of live information. And you can do sort of 0 to 60 tests, like the one in the top left-hand corner, for example. Okay, so this screen here tells you if there's anything where um, it's emissions related. So misfires, fuel systems, components, system check like the spark plugs, etc. But the one that we're interested in today, if I go back to the main screen, is this one here that says fault code. So if I click on that and then tap it one more time, it's now going to search the car for any fault codes. And look at that, straight away, this is the code that I was telling you about. It says powertrain intake air temperature circuit high input. Now if I click on that, it gives me the fault code, which is a P0113. And as it says, you can web look up. So if I select that there, it would automatically take me to a website called troublecodes.net and it will bring it up. But you can just Google it as well. You know, there's, there's plenty of places that will tell you what these codes are. It gives you some uh, information here on the app. So it's saying that the intake air temperature sensor circuit high, that's for a Ford. Uh, air temperature AIT sensor high output. There's different vehicles. It obviously is a code that's used for similar issues across the board. Um, Suzuki, Land Rover, etc. So you can scroll down until you find Honda, but what I like to do is simply just Google it. So P0113, let's go into that, let's go to Google. Honda P0113 code.
So now if I want to clear this code, it will clear it, but then I recommend that you test it once more to see if it stays away. So you press the three dots, and it says here, clear faults on ECU. Now I know this is going to come straight back, because the way that I've got that GS2 chip booster, it will just keep bringing up these faults. So if I clear the faults, it gives you the warning message to make sure that you physically amend the fault and, and uh, before you continue. You press OK, and it says here, please wait, checking fault codes, 43%. And it's completed and now we don't have any fault codes however if I then go back and I read the fault codes I'm pretty sure it will come straight back and there she is P0113 you know I'm not too fussed about it I don't have any lights and you can see here that there's no yellow warning or engine lights on my dashboard and until I get issues with it then I'll keep driving because I think it gives me just that little boost which is really good it just it just helps especially at the low end and if I find I've got problems with it, then I simply disconnect it, I can plug in the existing ECU and I go back to stock. When you do that though, make sure you do it with the keys out of the ignition, otherwise you will put a fault on the dashboard. I did it once before, it does clear itself, but it takes about four or five goes of starting the engine and then eventually that message will go. So look, I hope you found this helpful. A lot of people have gone on about these little boxes, whether they're actually just a, a scam or not. My gut feeling, my personal experience on them is that they're not. They do give you that little boost. It's difficult to put numbers on it in terms of exactly what it gives, but the fact that it's a plug and play and that you can disconnect it at any time, that's gotta be a great thing. So stick everything you need to know down below and appreciate if you took the time to get to the end of this video and subscribe and all that. So thanks for the thumbs up. See you on the next one.